Hey everyone, welcome to the Parts Girl podcast. I'm excited to be interviewing Todd today. Welcome, Todd. Hi, how are you doing, Kaylee? I'm doing great. Like I mentioned, this is my first time recording with a baby that's not sleeping. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll we'll see how this goes. But Todd, why don't you let everyone know, you know, who you are, what what company you're with, and and we'll go from there. I'm Todd. I I run, I consider myself the manager of uh, digital dealership system. We are a managed digital sign and dashboard solution uh, for car dealerships. And so this is, you created this to replace the whiteboard. Is that what yeah, I remember? So our focus has transferred. So we offer different varieties of services. So recently we revamped our marketing to have two different components. So we have the digital signs and we have the dashboards. So digital signs are in-store digital platforms, basically on screens or TVs inside the dealership that are customer facing, whereas dashboards are more management facing. So replacing dry erase boards or some dealers that are technically savvy use things like Google Sheets, or they put up like a screen and put marketing or excuse me, put uh, reports on those screens and they're manual. So I talked to one dealer out of California for all of his stores. He was spending two hours a day updating his boards with reports and then each store would be required to update their own so in general for his eight stores he was spent the each store would spend an hour plus he'd spend two hours and they'd have the report set up and then with our systems they get updated every 15 minutes so with the dashboards we not only save time but especially on the where you're coming from on the fixed op side it's such a dynamic part of a dealership so in depending on the size of a store, your salesperson, their closing ratios are relevantly high based on how many people they see. So over the course of a month, they're not seeing hundreds of people. They're seeing 20, 30, 40 people, depending on the dealership. But when you're looking at a fixed op side, the service manager or the service advisors are going to see anywhere from up to 500 on average people over the course of a month. So in a given day, their stats can change dramatically. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, if, if they're up to, like, if it's up to them to update them without, mm -hmm. you know, having what you have, that could cause, like, this data not being accurate, probably, because there's just so much going on, right? Yeah, so there's multiple aspects of it. So when you look at a system like ours, it's going to be updated every 15 minutes directly from the DMS showing like 15 different reports. So the dealership can pick and choose the reports that go on a screen that they see, but they're also available on the desktop as well. So okay. you what you're referring to is another component. So you have things like time, right? How long it takes them to update it. Then is it accurate when they update it, which is what you were referring to. And then the other aspect is how often it gets updated. So what I was referring to is how, if you have, if they're seeing 500 people over the course of a month for each advisor, then they have a, they could, that they're dynamically changing information throughout the day. So based on their attitude or based on incentives or with our system, they could put in goals. So if they know that they're going to reach a certain amount of goals, then they could go ahead and, and add to those. They could see how they're performing impacts their goals. Yeah. And on the fixed op side, they have all these different KPIs that impact their salary. And so they have it, they could see all that on the screen dynamically updated throughout the day. So why, why this solution? Why, why did this, how did this all start? <laughs> so we've had the sales leaderboard for on the sales side of for eight years uh, or more now. And we've always been the most technologically advanced digital sign company. And what we've noticed in the industry is an area that, that isn't really being pushed is like, how do you motivate the sales team? How do you motivate the fixed ops team? And when we did informal polls, a lot of times what they were doing was adding to, they, they, would, they would give out reports every day, or they'd have the sales team has a meeting once a day, or the fixed ops team has an end of week report that they give out. And that's always after the fact. And so what we wanted to do was create a program that was not only dynamic on a screen, but something that managers could look at from their, re from their desktops as well, or mobile devices to see how the store is doing. And with fixed ops, 
this the general manager is often interested in the fixed ops numbers, but they don't know how to manage the DMS side of things. So giving them access to those reports was also important as well. And since they're updated throughout the day, they could see how their performance and how those meetings that they have and how those incentives actually impact the bottom line. And yeah, so and I, there was a big gap in the industry for that technology and a big need for that. See that and, it, and having it in everyone's faces kind of shows like kind of h- helps hold everyone accountable, I would mm-hmm. imagine. Mm-hmm. And in motivating, but yeah. I mean, I guess right. it depends on the personality. I mean, but I would say most people are motivated motivated by seeing it right in front of their face and like, okay, I'm doing good today. Yeah, or, yeah. So yeah. we we hear from a lot of dealers. It, it's a, it's a it sometimes is a technology thing. Whenever there's a new technology, some people are like, oh, I don't want my numbers. Everyone's seeing my numbers. Well, they're not your numbers or the dealership numbers. You just happen to be working there. So it's kind of an ownership thing. At the same okay. time, everybody's uh, compensation can be different. So just because they hit certain numbers doesn't mean their compensation is more than someone else's because they all have different goals. If you're new in the business, you might have different goals and incentives based on those goals than someone who's been there for a long period of time. So what happens is that, and then depending on where you are in the store, so our fixed ops leaderboard has a component for service advisors and a component for techs, as well as a component for management. What and about so, the parts people? <laughs> so unfortunately, the way the DMS are set up is that we have di- the parts is different, is separated out as a separate component or what's what it like in CDK terms is called a PIP, but a different integration just for parts. So uh, what's, so we have had some inquiries about parts. The challenge that we have with parts is provide, and I know you're, you, you asked that facetiously, but the, the <laughs> reason why the, the, the reason why parts gets a little bit, every dealer wants to see something different on a leaderboard of parts. Yeah. And when it comes to service and fix and, and text, they pretty much have wanted to see the same thing. So we've created 12 to 15 reports specifically for that. Whereas uh-huh. when we talk to dealers and say, well, what would you want to see on parts? They all say something completely different. And then okay. do you want to invest in that and pay for that? And then yeah. so that so there's a little bit of a gap there also. They might not even totally realize what they need to see in parts yet. Yeah. Because uh, it's one of those things that is kind of left behind. But <laughs> yeah, I had to ask because you're like not talking about parts. So I'm like, yeah, hey, what about parts? In, intentionally because it, it, it's a different integration pathway and because yeah. the barriers that are there are, are individualized per store versus being centralized across every store ha- looks for things like effective labor rate. They look for CSI. They look for revenue goals. They look for appointment goals. They look for tech efficiency. They look for hours, you know, those buzzwords. When you look at parts, they, they want to know like sometimes inventory levels and it requires a whole back end of like, okay, what do you want your inventory levels to be? And then it's not as dynamic. What we've learned with these integrated products that face even on our digital sign components, because we're the only digital sign company that actually manages the signs for customers. When we talk to dealerships for on the for the fixed op side or for the sales side, or now we have a BDC component as well, they say, well, where are we, how much do we actually have to do? <laughs> so if it's updated automatically, they like that. But when it oh, comes yeah. to parts, everything had to be like, the pricing has to be manually put in because we might not get that from the DMS, the all like what's in the DMS versus their parts management software. Like there's different levels of components for that. And so it it adds a little bit of a sticky point for standardizing in some way. Okay. So you had mentioned goals. So you guys help dealerships set goals or like talk about the goals with me. Yes. So, so just to clarify, we're not consultants in any way. We're selling products and services that help the dealers to motivate their teams. Uh-huh. So our fixed ops leaderboard as, as a point of emphasis for this call was about, is, a, is um, has a component in there that allows them to add their own goals. So if uh-huh. they put their goals in, then our, the, the, the overarching uh, message from this, the leaderboard is putting those that those numbers in front of them. So if we if you were working for me and I was your your manager and I said, Kaylee, what are your goals for the month? And I write them down and you never see them again. 
But now we say, okay, what is your revenue goal? What is your RO goal? What is your, um, what is your goal for what's your current CSI? I put that stuff in and then it shows up on the screen. So, you know, so you don't have to get a report at the end of the month saying you were, you're at 70% of your goal. Well, if you were to push a little harder or had a better attitude, service is impact can impact. It's kind of service is very much like the service industry, like a McDonald's, right? Like yeah. if you say, would you like fries with that? You know, like how many more times do people say yes to fries because they ask for it? So if you have a goal of X dollars or a goal of XROs or uh, whatever that goal is, and you are given the tools and the structure to say, hey, why don't we add on windshield wipers or you want to go ahead and do, why don't we do a premium oil change because your car is a little bit older or why don't we add on this service? If you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it. So if you have, if you see how your goals can be impacted, if it's the last week of the month and you're at 70% of your goals and you're like, I get a thousand dollar bonus if I hit my goal and I'm at 70% and I need to sell another $10,000. Well, now I could go ahead and look at that and say, okay, I just need to sell another 10,000 to hit my goal. And now I can see how my attitude creates more money for me, which leads to more money for the dealership. Absolutely. Well, and I like, there's a, there's a difference between just setting a goal and like actually seeing those baby steps mm -hmm. that you're mm -hmm. taking to achieve it. Mm -hmm. And I could see how it's really valuable to see it right in front of your face. Like, okay, I'm almost there. Yeah. Um, that's really cool that you can set your own goals. And, and I assume it's by like each individual because each yep. person's yep. going to have different goals. And everybody has different goals well and they, they, they have different roles in the department and they have different history. So with our system, they could see what their trends are. They could see what they did the past few months or the past 90 days. So they know what they know where they are throughout that process. Um, mm -hmm. So to know how to set their goals for the future. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Okay. So where, so I think I asked how this all started, but like, where did it all start for you? Like, how did you get into this? <laughs> digital signs and the digital dealership system started when I lived in Nashville. So I had, I owned three different bars and some other businesses in Nashville. And one of my customers owned a car dealership. And he said, this is 2011, 12, 13, somewhere in there. So 10 plus, 12 plus years ago. So I said, well, what would you want? And ironically, that philosophy of what would you want has come full circle to today where we consistently talk to dealers and saying, what services are you looking for? Dealers say, can I customize a report? And we're like, well, what would you customize? Because we want to create the best programs and the, and for dealers. So unlike other vendors in the marketplace, we didn't go ahead and say, here's our product, like it or not. What we've um, done from the beginning, literally from the first conversation that I've had with a car dealership in my life was what would you want a system like ours to do? And yeah. that has been the blueprint for every product that we've come out with. When somebody says, we want this, we're like, okay, what do you want it to do? When we look at like the sales leaderboard, this is about four years ago, we started creating the sales leaderboard from scratch. We just started 100% because dealers gave us such feedback about what they wanted that we didn't have. And so we, and then it took us two plus years to develop it. And to, till this day, we have six people that are developing our dashboard programs that are full-time with our company. And they're, they're working on developing more and more products based on customer feedback. Yeah, I, I would say I was going to ask, how do you manage that? Because all the different requests, you probably have to like put everything in a bucket and say, okay, we've gotten 10 requests for this. Yeah. This is priority. We only got one, so this is down. Because that's what we're going through with developing our dashboard is like, there's just so much you can do, but you have to like hone in on like, what's the most important thing? <laughs> yeah, I think for me, and, and again, I, I kind of separate out, this has worked for me, but I'm open to new concepts or new ideas or things that people may be doing differently. Uh, for me, we track everything. So when somebody makes a, a feature request, if you will, we go ahead and track that. Um, yes. within the dashboard system ourselves, they could actually create feature requests and then other people can plus it or whatever, comment on it or thumb up it within our system. 
in, in addition, I'm speaking to dealers every day. And when I'm doing a presentation, I want to know what's, I ask them, even if they want to sign up for the program, I ask them what's missing from our program. Dealerships have, sometimes there you get a lot of interesting answers. Sometimes it's the first time someone asked for something and it's a great idea that you could see working for other dealers, but that's only one component of it because you could have all the ideas in the world, but unless it fits into what your core concepts are, like, okay, that's a great idea, but that doesn't fit into our current structure or that's a great idea, but the development cycle on that is three months. <laughs> so are yeah. we going to develop that one feature for that? Though, so for instance, um, we've had the request. So on our sales leaderboard program, we could provide logins for individual staff members. And we have a mobile app that goes along with that as well. That Not was built in. That's just for the sales side. Yes, yeah, just for the sales side. Yeah, for the sales side. And so when we're building that out for, since we have that structure, and each salesperson has their own landing page where they can only see all their own information. And it's like a really pretty reports and all that type of stuff built into it. We're building that for the, we have that structure built already. So we're adding that to fixed stops, but we had some dealers ask for additional user controls. So like they're a manager on the sales side who has five people underneath them would be able to see their reports for just the sales manager and their group. So yeah. if you have a store that sells four or 500 cars in a month and you have six sales managers, they, you don't want that sales manager necessarily seeing everything in aggregate and having access to all the reports, just their own base in a way. And so yeah. that development, that's in our development, but that's a long process to build out that structure on the back end. Again, so you have security, you have permissions. How do you group people together for permissions? You know, and wow. then how do you give access to different people and then have a module set up for I, this person with this login has permission to X, Y, and Z. So again, like, and then giving that control to the dealership for user controls, it, and then they're responsible for that. And it becomes, it becomes another layer that originally wasn't in the design, but there's value for that. So again, oh. one little concept and one conversation goes, yeah, I see how that's valuable, but the timeline on that is not something you just turn on. So, yeah. no, and that's important that we talk about that because, you know, before I, I'm actually glad we're having this conversation because we we we're we've been in development for the last year. And before that, we we didn't really have that. We didn't have a dashboard. So I don't think everyone fully understands a simple like, you know, can't we just assign people certain things? It's it's like that takes three months yeah. <laughs> to actually execute. Yeah, it's and not just the, the front end yeah. interface of it and making it look pretty is, you know, 24 hours, you know, <laughs> but actually coding it and making it secure and everything is very is, is a, there's a lot more involved in that. And we want to. So when we're supporting our customers, uh, they have the same access that we have. So we don't have any higher end access. We just have a different knowledge than they do. So yeah. when they log in, we see the same thing they see when we log in. It's just we understand how to manipulate what and how to use our system better than they do. We offer them training and we have help videos within our system. Um, so if dealers want to do it, they can. But uh, we don't have any we're not holding any secret sauce to our system, which was important when it was created. So there are certain foundational things that were created from the beginning when we developed the software. Um, like when you, when I speak to like CRMs or I talk to DMS companies or things like that, they have a whole separate module for support than what dealers see. And so with our system, we have a different structure altogether and we wanted to make it transparent. So even if they wanted to look up a particular deal and soon ROs, they could actually type in an RO in our system and they would see the, the details that we see for transparency on that RO. And we would have that avail. We have that currently for deals and we're building that for ROs. So we're, it's like just being transparent through the process from the development stages to the delivery stage and then to the support stage. Oh yeah. And I think it's really cool how, you know, you're working with dealerships on developing this for the fixed side mm -hmm. and really fine tuning it. Cause that's, I mean, you're developing something that they actually need or they're asking for. So that that's awesome. Yeah. We've actually had some dealers and we've asked this, we've had some really good dealer partners who have sent us, Hey, we have this report internally. Can you create it? So it updates automatically. 
And so we've actually taken, because if you're talking to a store, a group that has five stores or six stores, and they have the same report at all their stores, that's really is a proof of concept. As long as we have the data and what we're learning with fixed ops, much more different than the sales side is the data that we get is very varied based on, and the data that's used at the stores are, is very different. And so we have to take that all into consideration when creating these reports to make sure it works with every DMS because not every report does. And so we, it's, there's a lot, just because someone at the store is using a particular report, we, we don't want to put that, we don't want to make that, like push that out to everybody automatically. But if we have the data, we could put up a new report as, uh, that, that we feel is good in, in about a week's time. So, and we've done that. We, that just a couple of weeks ago, we released five new reports on the sales side. We're, we're constantly adding more stuff, again, based on dealer feedback, because that's, they're our customers and we're creating products for them. Yeah. What would you say is like the number, when you show this to someone on the fixed side, what is like the number one feedback or the best thing they say, like after seeing it, you know, is it like an eye opening thing or like, what is the best feedback you get? So there are tools in the marketplace for fixed ops analytics, but it's extremely hard to use. They're not really they're, they're, So what they see in our system is something that's easy to use, something that's on screens and something that they could use in a variety of different ways. And that's automated. So the other tools that are out there are basically sometimes glamorized spreadsheets or they're so elaborate and costly, $2,500 to $3,500 a month for a program. And ours is $500 a month. So it's a, it's, a, it's a big difference in what we're doing. And I think the big wow factor for them is it's going to help them do their job more efficiently. The challenge that they have is selling it to the person. And the fixed ops world is very different than the sales world. Most GMs, as you know, have come up through the sales world. Whereas in the fixed ops world, a lot of times they need to get some sort of approval for, the, for, uh, for to purchase that $500. And it's like, and they, they have to sell that, that it's going to be a motivational tool for their, for their team. And yeah, that's the I know. Isn't that interesting how, how that is on the fixed side? <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a, it's, it's just a definition of empathy. I think the person, yeah. the, the person who's come up, I think there's a stat 98, 99% of the people on the, that run dealerships came up on the sales side. And a lot of them, it, it's just a dynamic of car dealerships without getting into that, that conversation too much. But most yeah. general managers, when they have meetings, the fixed ops guy comes to them. When yeah. most general managers are not, don't understand the intricacies of fixed ops, they just see the numbers. So what happens is that like the fixed ops team is a ton of people and a ton of ROs and a ton of customers. You know, in, in general, they're going to see, have, they're going to do 10 times more ROs than sales in a dealership, okay. let alone internals. So they just don't but have, I they don't have, they don't have the understanding of the business as well as the fixed ops guys do. And so the, yeah. the empathy for what they may need to make their job better or to make their job more efficient or to motivate their team is just different. Yeah, and I could see how your technology or your solution can help GMs and dealers see that side of the business that they're not seeing, right? Yep. Like, because you have a solution for the sales side, mm -hmm. you can say, you know, like, they're curious, they're wanting to see the fixed side, and you yep. can show them yep. that. So yeah, and we have, so we have people, the sales managers who have the board or in, in like a, sale, a general manager's office, and if they have the fixed ops leaderboard as well as a sales leaderboard, they will sometimes put some of the fixed ops reports on their board. So they would see that and they can't miss it. So just like your sales team would want to see it regularly, the general manager is seeing it regularly. So they have a better understanding of how the store is performing as well. Yeah. As an industry where we are t talking about how service advisors are salespeople and mm -hmm. we need to try to change that dynamic. So it's solutions like yours that really help allow us to treat service advisors like salespeople to show those goals, show the numbers, because mm -hmm. that's what salespeople are constantly looking at. And that's what's motivating us. Yep. So, yeah, I, I love it.
Yep. This is awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah. How did we get connected? I can't remember. Was it through LinkedIn? Yeah, it was probably through LinkedIn. I mean, you do a lot of posting no. on there and, and we do a, a fair amount of stuff on there as well with our promoting our products or our blogs and stuff like that, that we, we write. So there's, so there's probably, there's a definitely a cross pollination there. Oh yeah. So uh, before we wrap up, I always like asking people what they love most about what they're doing. So what do you love most about, you know, your role and Everything. Well, I, th I think the biggest thing is when you hear back from a customer, how our product helped them to be more successful in their job. Um, you know, when, when you, or when somebody moves from one position to another position and, and, and they're like, and they, they call us to bring us into that store, you know, yeah. cause it was successful where they were before. And then they moved to a new store. And, and that's just happened recently. I mean, we had somebody who's, they're building a new store and they're like, and, and they, they wanted us to go into that new store with them. And we had, we had one guy move from one store to another and they, he brought the leaderboard and the fix ops board over with him. And it's like, and, and the store loves it. You know, it's like it's, or we had one guy who moved from one store to another and, and they had a competitor of ours. And then they they allowed him to bring our product in, which doesn't always happen. And it was one of those yeah. things that he's like, they were like night and day difference between us and the competitor product that's out in the marketplace. Yeah. So it's like those types of like feedback where you don't ask for, you don't ask for feedback, but somebody calls you and says, Hey, we want to add another system or, Hey, I just did another store or, Hey, I want, I need this. Or, you know, it becomes more of a, Hey, this is part of our business and, and, and different than how just, it, it's not, it's no longer like a, a want, it's like a need, you know, I need this product to, to be better at my position or our customers Some, need this product to keep them more informed about their services and things like that. Yeah. That's very rewarding. And, and you, I'm sorry, if you already said this, when did you guys start on um, the fixed solution? The side? fixed board came out probably the beginning of last year because we did have it at NADA last year, but it's not like we, it, we've grown it significantly. We've just released enterprise version of our fixed ops leaderboard. So if we had a fixed ops director over multiple stores, we have four different reports that are cumulative reports that will show how okay. each store is doing against each other's store. Oh, awesome. So instead of, so our standard leaderboard shows all the advisors or all the techs. When you look at an enterprise report in our terminology, it's each it's store versus store versus employee versus employee. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's really good. The reason I asked about how long it's the fixed site is because as you mentioned, people are bringing your service in if they're moving stores, mm -hmm. that's where you like, you're really starting to feel that momentum of like, sure. okay, it's sure. working. So, yeah. so yeah, well, it's good that you guys are having that track. There's a lot of transition in, in the mar in the marketplace, you know? So I think I'm not sure if it's, cyclical as far as now more than other times, but I, I feel that maybe as our installation base has installed, I am seeing yeah. that more as people move from one store to another, maybe we're just touching more stores at this point. Um, yeah. And we're, we're seeing that trend where people are moving on a regular basis from one store to another. And we want to, and they say, and, and they were our customers or they've had experience with our product in those stores. They want to bring them where they buy a new store or whatever, or open a new store. And they, they say, it's like part of just part of the nature of the company more of the dealership group yeah. more than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I mean, that's really exciting. So um, is there anything that you wanted to add as we wrap up? Is there anything you wish I would have asked? Or anything you want to say? <laughs> no, I, I think so. I, today's focus was really on the it, the dashboard component of our system. We also do have the customer facing services like service status boards, menu boards, commercial free oh, wow. TV for the lounge, video wall, showroom screens, all that stuff inside the store as well. And then that's our digital sign components. And then the dashboard program is the other program that's a management facing program. So we have those two components, um, the, the integrated concepts that we have, whether that's service status or sales appointments or customer lounge TV with status built into it for your waiters, you know, all that stuff are things that we, we see a big increase in the interest in our integrated products and a big value in those products and our dashboard products versus the standard digital sign components where we have dealers who have 
even OEM programs that have paid additional money for our services be- and canceled the OEM programs because they don't provide that extra level of service and they're trying to be different from the other competitors in the marketplace, not have the mm-hmm. same digital sign programs, have do something different, ha- show service status, show systems in a different way, and just have more of a managed service because it's hard to get some support from those o- some of the OEM programs that are in the marketplace. And so by having an alternative available to dealers, that's been really successful as well. Yeah, I could see that. It's like a full customer experience. So I I mean, that's, we could totally, we could probably talk for hours about all the different solutions, but I think that this was really good topic to focus on the fixed ops and the dashboard mm-hmm. and the gold. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm really excited to have more conversations sure. about this. Sure. <laughs> but if anyone wants to get a hold of you, I'm sure they can find you on LinkedIn. We'll have the links in the show notes, but is there any other way? Just your website, probably. Yeah, just a website, digitaldealershipsystem.com. And uh, LinkedIn, if they want to get in touch with me, uh, but just you could schedule demos online. There's a Calendly connection there to schedule a demo. Cool. All of our products are there. Just kind of give a brief overview, and then we could do a deep dive into anything. All the information out of the Fixed Ops leaderboard, it has its own page on the website dedicated to the dashboard and the Fixed Ops leaderboard. So a lot of information is there, but really to go through it and to see the back end and how everything works, best to go ahead and schedule a call. Yeah, that's one of those things. you got to see it. Yep, <laughs> so definitely. Well- Thank you so much, Todd, for coming on the show. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Parts Edge, the power tool for your parts department. We hope you're leaving feeling motivated, challenged, and inspired. 